Well, hey guys, welcome. We are at the Data Center Innovation Fest here at Cisco. My name is Rob Boyd. This is TechWise TV Live. We have an incredible audience here with us today. Thank you guys. All right. Wow. I don't know about you, but that always kind of gets my heart going just a little bit. Deserve it or not, this is a very uh, happy crowd. Uh, we're having a celebration, and it's a great excuse, not just because it's uh, September bordering on October, and it's time for some October Fest, which you're going to see a lot in this show today, but we have a lot of incredible technologies to talk about. We're going to talk about UCS and some innovations that are happening in this area, some of which you may have already heard about. I'll spill the beans in terms of the title, because I think it's already out there. We were calling it Project Starship, as people really got their feet wet. Now, it is Cisco Intersight and you're gonna love what this can do for you. And we're gonna have all those details from a couple of different angles, including some demos. We're gonna have a lot of fun, and I I'm, apologize, I'm, I'm used to having a co-host here, and I, Lauren. Yeah. Over here, Rob. Uh, yeah, we're gonna I, talk a little bit about ACI 3.0 too. Um, yes. You know, ACI Anywhere, ACI Multisite, and a lot of the other cool stuff that's coming along with this major release. Thank you. Um, sure. Uh, what are you uh, doing? I, I mean, I'm playing the accordion. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Okay, no, 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 thank you for that. So, ACI, we've got UCS, we have a whole lot of stuff going. You never know what's going to happen when it's a live show. Uh, one of the most important things is that you take information from here. We're certainly looking to entertain, but to educate and to give you something actionable that you can go do. There's a lot of smart people in this room, and we're looking to extract as much information as we, out from them as we can for our benefit as well as for yours. So stay with us. We're going to be talking about Cisco's strategy in the data center with Frank Palumbo in just a moment. So hang on. My name is Rob Boyd. It's Lauren Malhoy on the accordion. It's time for TechWise TV. How you doing, sir? Thank you. Wow. Is this fun? It's pretty cool. You got I've the, seen you, you got do the this. beer here. Yeah, this is great. You normally do this kind of thing internally, and so yeah, I, but get I, to see I don't it. have beer at my events. This this is pretty good. I didn't know. I was watching <laughs> it remotely. So this is so much fun. So let me ask you. Um, I'm not used to having executives on the show a lot. Uh, I'll, try, really I'll try not engineers. to screw it up. Yeah, no, I just, okay. so just understand, we're not used to having kind of an executive presence. You look, <laughs> it's a nice coat though. Uh, okay. You look very nice. <laughs> uh, what we want to understand is the strategy. And as we get into that, let me just start with, because you're, what is your title? Because you deal with customers your entire career. That's what you've been doing, yeah? Yeah, so uh, Senior VP of Sales for the Data Center Portfolio, okay. that would be the best way to say it. So how would you phrase, how, how are customers, what are they asking us to do? What do you think they expect from us? Well, you, you know, f from a customer point of view, I, I think th they're saying, hey, Cisco or hey, Frank, uh, help, us, help us modernize my data center so I can be ready to be competitive in this yeah. new digital world, right? And that means a lot, of, a lot of different things to different people. But they're saying, hey, help me modernize my data center, right? right. I want it open, I want it automated, and I want to have some type of policy you know, that I could follow as I, I drive it, right? And they say, I'm going to do it on-prem in our own data center, or private cloud is the word. And, but they're going to use you know, cloud services, managed mm -hmm. service providers, SaaS, infrastructure as a service, and, and, and kind of do it in both places. Wow. Okay. You know? but, but they're asking us for some special things, though. Like what? Right? They want to have their applications like bl blueprinted the same way. They want the ability to move workloads around. Yeah. Right? They want to have the policy model that they may set up on-prem in their data center to extend into the cloud. Then they want their, their you know, applications for those new uh, bespoke and custom apps you know, mm. instrumented for, for their DevOps community. Because those applications maybe are the ones that make them digitally. That's a really know, unique differentiator a lot of customers are looking for, right? And how for fast sure. they do that, and they really can't have us holding them back. Um, let me ask you this, not, not a sensitive question. How do you think Cisco's doing with cloud? This has really been part of our strategy. It's going to be a major part of the conversation today, but it can mean different things to different people. How do you, how, how, are we participating in a heavy way there? Oh, big time, right? And you'll hear a lot of it, uh, about that today because we'll talk about ACI Anywhere, so kind of our, our strategic SDN platform. We're going to put that in the cloud. And then listen, Tony will talk about you know, how we manage UCS today with a new product we call Intersight and the, the cloud ramifications yeah. you know, of that. So we're big time in it. And, but we'd like to bring the end story, right? We wanna, we're putting a lot of our key software assets in the cloud. You know, AppDynamics, we made a, a great purchase of them, you know, instrumenting those applications. We have a product called Cloud Center, which is gonna give you that cloud hybrid cloud, cloud yeah. management, right? We've already talked about Tetration, you know, our analytics mm -hmm. platform in the data center. You know, that is available in Amazon, and it'll be, it'll be available to some other platforms, right? Our security portfolio uh, is already in I the cloud. There's a lot of cloud elements. Right, now. and the two yep. new 
nuance today, ACI Anywhere and Intersight, you know, very much cloud native. So tee this up for us. That's our two big announcements today. Uh, we'll cover a little bit of background, but ACI Anywhere. What, um, what are customers looking for out of this? How would you kind of set this up? Obviously, you've got a lot of experts coming in here behind you, so I don't want to pressure you. For our customers, it means flexibility to say, mm. hey, I can develop this policy on-prem, and I, I'm not, I'm not going to be you know, held captive. You know, any cloud, any hypervisor, I could still run the policy model from Cisco that I want to do. And UCS, we've now got Cisco Intersight. We formerly called that Starship. Um, uh, really, that's got kind of a, a similar model in terms of different ways we're allowing people to interact with their on-premise gear. Is that pretty much where we're going yeah. there? You know, things like telemetry, things the way to install from the cloud, manage from the cloud, you know, not just be locked into that data center, ways to open it up. Excellent. Frank, All right. is there anything else we need to cover? Well, you got the right people here to cover it as we I know, go we do. Maybe I can go back and have a beer now. You can absolutely have All a right. beer. Frank, thank, thank you. you so much, guys. Yeah. Please give Frank a hand. Oh, thank you very much. So I was thinking, Lauren, in terms of how uh, everything is being perceived here, that there's people in here that are, are more comfortable with one technology than another. Because we tend to talk about ACI or UCS. Yeah? yeah, yeah. I think it's a good idea for us to do some sort of primer or a, a primer. Primer, if you primer, will. tomato, tomato. <laughs> Depending on what you prefer. UCS really represents an incredibly tight coupling of hardware and software. It's not one just running on uh, generic the other. Um, yes, there are servers. and. Um, uh, so we have uh, B-series blade servers that run in chassis, but we also have C-series rack mounts. We've got um, uh, S-series for storage. We've got servers, but to understand, just to walk through some basics here on the, on the basic components, they sit logically under a pair of fabric interconnects. So logical system, it could be any, they're relatively interchangeable from a server perspective. This, of course, is all controlled through UCS Manager. That's your interface, okay? And that's done all with APIs. Everything within UCS Manager is controlled through APIs. And these are all open APIs, meaning every bit of UCS is accessible programmatically through the APIs, making it really easy to have third-party integration. So what we're seeing is this ability to extract so it becomes a programmable infrastructure. It's a software-defined compute. And the neat thing is, is it even takes physical systems into account. So those become part of the virtual infrastructure. Okay? So my favorite part, because all of that is just to build up to say, because we're glossing over, of course, so many technical details in a quick primer. Thank um, you. But the idea behind this is scale. So you can scale, yes, by adding more blades into your chassis. Of course, you can add more uh, rack mount servers as well. In fact, you can actually add, uh, I think it's, I'll make sure I get these numbers right, 160, yep. 160 <laughs> rack mount servers, or as many as 20. 20, thank chassis. you. God, I'm not good with numbers on the fly. Uh, <laughs> of the chassis, you've also got Hyperflex showing in here as well. But the thing that's important to notice here, it's the same pair of fabric interconnects in that single management domain. That's the power because there is no increase in complexity. There's no additional management that you're either paying for or just dealing with from an administrative standpoint for whether you're dealing with a small system or a large system. Does that make sense? I mean, this is yeah. incredible. And then if that's not enough system for you, and quite frankly, for quite a few customers, they've expanded beyond that, you've got UCS Central that gives you the ability to look out across all of this, the manager of managers. When we talk to engineers and we talk to customers, the number one thing everybody brings up is being the unique uh, differentiator that really makes all this possible is the concept of service pro Profiles. This is a, um, a recipe, as Chris was describing it to me earlier. Uh, best defined is a recipe that becomes very easy to replicate. It contains all of the state information, all the connection, the connectivity information, policy information, everything that makes the server a server in an actual environment. So the server comes out stateless, the policy gives it to it, and all those policies are spawned or created from templates. So the idea is you have the right people create the right things one time, and then you use that everywhere you need, and you begin to eliminate errors, and you can scale in ways that's much easier than, than any other method for doing this. But what you really get is you end up getting a programmable infrastructure. And so with a programmable infrastructure, you now have the ability to, to really tightly couple your workload with the server configuration. So no matter where it's located, you've got it right there. You have different server islands because you've got different unique application needs. Well, then you've got the ability to do it all from one system, one interface, and this is the power that UCS begins to bring to your operation. Again, if you're not that familiar with it. Yeah. And of course, what you're seeing today is the fact that UCS has done an extremely good job conquering the market. We've revolutionized what we can do for compute by allowing people to think differently. It was a design that was built from something different and we're continuing to execute on that. So we're really seeing UCS take on this, this software, uh, the virtualization kind of environment in ways that no one else could before. And we've also done the same thing with hyperconvergence, taking into that market. We're doing extremely well with Hyperflex. And now you're seeing another stage today as we move into Cisco Intersight. So we're talking programmable infrastructure at this cloud 
that cloud level, cloud managed level. I think I get that right. Liz will yeah. straighten me out here. Globally in managed level. Yeah, I'll work with that as well. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So that brings us to ACI, application centric infrastructure, uh, doing the same things for the network, basically. I yeah, mean, very that's, similar. That's what we're trying level. to do, right? So, you know, Rob said we're going to talk about service profiles again, and we will a little bit. Service profiles are to UCS what application profiles are to ACI. So they're not that dissimilar when we think about it. Let's talk about the application. An application is not a simple thing. And any of you that have been through application dependency mapping know this and know this well, right? An application is not just a few VMs, a few virtual machines I threw up. It's VMs, it's physical machines, it's layer four through seven devices, it's policy requirements, connectivity requirements. It's a whole ecosystem of things that need to be addressed. So what the ACI creators did, they decided regular traditional networking constructs aren't gonna work, let's clean slate it. And really what we're trying to do is make one group of objects talk to another group of objects, hopefully using some sort of controlled policy, right? We want that security as well. Physically, the topology is a spine leaf uh, architecture, meaning it's two tiers. Um, each endpoint connects to a leaf. The leafs connect to spines, meaning each endpoint is never more than two hops apart. ACI wasn't built that long ago, so programmability was top of mind, meaning, again, all open APIs. The third-party integration is very simple. Take, for example, the northbound APIs to orchestrators like UCS Director, OpenStack, um, Cloud Center, of course, was mentioned earlier. So Cisco or non-Cisco. Cisco, non-Cisco, non it can all work. Um, so data center network kind of, um, but it is systemized, delivered yep. as a system. Is that Ex fair? Exactly. Okay. So when you bring in these controllers, these APICs, we can manage the overlays, the underlays, the, the hardware, if you will, the policy, the mm. visibility and health, all from one place, very efficient, very simple. You said health, I like that a lot mm. as well. But one of my favorite things about this is the fact that what you get with ACI is you get an extremely tight coupling of your overlay and your underlay in ways that nobody else is doing, and you're managing that from a single system. Yeah, yeah, we're not managing two networks, right? Um, and building on some of that simplicity, really, brings us to application profiles again. Mm. Basically, what we do with the application profiles, this is where our policy comes in. So endpoints are going to be put into endpoint groups. Policy will be associated with these endpoint groups. And the cool thing is, you might think, well, this is a lot like traditional networking. No, it's not, because we don't care about IP addressing anymore. So it doesn't not have to be tied to location tied. or the IP address, which is just useless at that point. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Okay. All we care about are groups of objects and policy at this point. And so now, with today's announcements, we're actually extending this approach to multiple data centers, even clouds. Yeah, absolutely. So this is an exciting time. Hope that helps set a little bit of groundwork for some of the stuff that we think just makes a ton of sense with regards to these technologies. It's time to get in a little bit more detail. I want you guys to hang on because we've got, uh, in a moment, we're going to talk about ACI Anywhere, as Lauren just mentioned uh, here with Tom Edsel. But before we get there, I feel like, obviously, uh, let's just keep that same pattern. We've been talking about UCS. What about UCS? I mean, there's been a lot of new announcements already, right, with the new uh, fifth generation, the M5. Mm. So there's yep. a lot of cool stuff there. Obviously, we're talking about Intersight. So, I mean, UCS, it's not stopping, folks. Well, Lauren, thank you very much for helping with that. Guys, let's get on with a UCS conversation, talk about what's new. Please help me welcome Liz Santoni. How are you doing? Last time we were together, it was... Um, Hyperflex. We were talking more, um, yeah, Hyperflex. Yeah, and, and it, was, it was here, a little different stage, yeah. a little bit different layout. You sure know how to throw a party. Yeah, well, I have a lot of help from some of your friends and you <laughs> and others. So thank you very much for taking the time here. And um, this is exciting. I love it when we get to talk new technology. That's the whole reason, you know, frankly, I try to keep my job going. Um, before we get to the new stuff, just in general with what you're responsible for, your general manager of the computer, uh, Compute Systems Division, mm -hmm. is that correct? So you oversee a lot, um, and there's a lot of things that we do. It's been very dynamic. What's working for us right now? A lot of things. Yeah? Geez, where do I start? So let me start with the numbers, right? Um, when you look at UCS, we're over 60,000 customers now. That's pretty phenomenal. Yes, it is. For people who are not supposed to be in the server business, right? So obviously <laughs> something is working nice for us. Yeah. Um, we're number one in converged infrastructure stacks, along with our storage partners. Mm -hmm. in, the, in an industry that's pretty competitive, Number one in uh, SAP deployments. And um, the number of Hyperflex customers were over 2,000 Hyperflex customers. That's really growing fast. So since we talked the last time, yes. unless you live under a stone somewhere. Oh, you bring that um, into it. <laughs> 
we announced mm -hmm. our acquisition, our intent to acquire SpringPath. Yes. So that's the data platform that sits in our Absolutely. Hyperflex um, product. Well, UCS plus SpringPath is really the unique thing that we're bringing uh, because no one else is doing it like we've been able to do it. Over the past few weeks, we integrated Cloud Center and mm -hmm. Hyperflex. So we've got this great multi-cloud right. solution uh -huh. and we've got over two dozen customers. Just really? in the past couple of weeks, yeah. that I've actually not just bought, but looking to deploy it as well. Keep well. that pace up, you think? Absolutely. Okay. And then if you remember, earlier in the year, um, as a company, we acquired AppD. Yes. We're now integrating App Dynamics into that same bundle as well. Okay. So continuing to expand and have the conversations not just with the IT admin, but also with the cloud buyers With the as instrumentation, well. the analytics, and just Absolutely. that control you're talking about there. Yeah. And it really is not a matter of, uh, are you doing cloud or are you doing on-premise? You're going, exactly. well, I need a little bit of uh, a lot of different things, and it's going to be different for everybody. It truly is a multi-cloud yeah. solution. You know, customers would come in, the first thing they don't say is, hey, I wake up in the middle of the night screaming, I want multi-cloud. Right. But what they do worry about <laughs> is... Some of your team uh, does. Yeah. yeah, they do, actually. So. <laughs> What they do worry about is applications. Because yeah. when they look at it, is every data center that's out there was built to do one thing, run applications. Right. right. So they're worrying about what's the performance of my applications, what's the security look like, are my applications secure enough, is it running efficiently? And as Frank talked about, right, it's all about organizations are building these bespoke custom apps because that's how they're expressing their differentiation. So there's this large population of developer community out there, and you've got to meet the needs of the developer community. Mm -hmm. And when you think about the developers is that they have no religion. They don't just worship at you know, a cloud. They, they want to go to any cloud that's out there. So a big focus of what we're looking to do is enable IT to have that flexibility to go multi-cloud. And so when you think about it, the first few things that come to mind is simplicity, mm -hmm. automation, analytics. These are kind of the three key pillars that we kind of brought into Intersight as well. And we really so, can do it differently on this kind of platform to offer better services and unique unique things that customers uh, are learning that we can provide for them as absolutely. we build this out. Absolutely. So with Intersight, what we're doing is um, we're disrupting, again, yep. the whole server space, right? Yeah. Just like we did in 2009, we're completely changing the way systems are managed. So think about it, right? In a, as a company, in terms of multi-cloud, one of our core principles is take the innovation that we've done on-prem and make it cloud-enabled as well. So one of the first few things that we're doing with, uh, with Intersight is allowing a customer who's got his on-prem compute infrastructure right. to be managed from the cloud. So the first thing that should come to mind is, geez, operational simplicity taken to a completely new level. Yeah. Right. The second one is around telemetry. And Frank mentioned this as well. And telemetry as in doing the analytics to uh, leveraging things like machine learning in this massive amount of data that's already there to provide actionable insights and recommendations to our customers. So it's so you know the, the key words out there is predictive, proactive. Predictive. So we're okay. we're moving from reacting to things to be more predictive, proactive by providing those recommendations. And the third one is you're now talking about one single management platform that you can manage the entire life cycle of your infrastructure, whether it's UCS, whether it's Hyperflex, or it's a converged infrastructure stacks that include components from our third-party storage partners as well. Right, so the key three, three key pillars in there, it's really simplicity, automation, analytics. Wow. Changing the way how systems are managed, mm -hmm. and you don't see anyone else in the industry doing it. No, I'm not. I tried to find some. Yeah, yeah just in preparation. It's not just that. It's like, I, I don't, none of us believe that they can, even yeah. if they tried. No, I like we're leveraging from strength. And, Absolutely. Uh, and we're doing things I didn't even think were possible, and I really love what this is setting up for us. Liz, I want to thank you so much for joining Good us. Guys, here. please give Liz and Tony a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so. Next up, Lauren, I think you've got Chris. We had Chris here for, for, for Hyperflex. Uh, can't get enough of him. No, no, we certainly can't. <laughs> so walk us through some of the details. How would you begin to explain this? Yeah, yeah, again, Chris Nichols, just fantastic Hyperflex guy, taking us through uh, Intersight now. I, I, want, I keep wanting to say Starship, right? <laughs> let's good. jump right in, Chris. So you know, when you kind of think about what we're doing with Intersight, it's really about marrying how we used to do all of our management structures with a great cloud managed platform. I think that's a great point again, Chris. You know, we have UCS Manager, we have UCS Director, we have UCS Central. Yeah. So where does Intersight fit in and why do we need another platform, right? Well, so I think if you call it another management platform, it's not really fair, right? Because we're folding in a lot of this stuff into a completely different dynamic as to how I really want to look at operational models. 
So think about this, right? You know, we've got converged stacks, we've got hyperflex, we've got branch offices. What we can do with Intersight is really look at this from a completely different model. So, you know, we've got our management portal with Intersight. And what this allows us to do is look at this again. You know, we've talked about this in a cloud-based format. So what this means is I'm going to pull in all of these different sites and fold in all of the different things that we could do with Director, with uh, UCS Manager, with UCS Central. So really what we're trying to do is a few different things. You know, we talked about it a lot. You know, Liz talked about this a few different times. The first thing that we're going to do is integrate policy. And we've talked about policy over ACI. We've talked about policy with UCS. Kind of a running theme. Well, it, it's intrinsic to the design, right? Mm -hmm. Because that forces your operational model. Because now I can look at all of this stuff and really tie that into a couple of different conversations. And you know, we talk about this a lot at Cisco in terms of security, right? So That's your little lockbox there. It is. Well, in case it, people couldn't tell. <laughs> so we'll make that a little bit better, right? <laughs> Um, so if you start to marry policy and security, what this really means is operationally, I say, look, you know, here's how I want all of my environments to, to look like. When I tie in security, that allows me to say, look, you know, once I've got the policy set, I can now enforce this. Mm -hmm. So that gets into auditory regulation, you know, making sure that I don't have any drift over all of my sites. You know, let's consider the fact that I may have different countries for each of these sites. But the great thing about this is that now we get to pull in all of these different sites. And I've drawn these in a couple different colors for a reason when I pre-populated the whiteboard because this doesn't necessarily mean different customers. You know, this could be different sites within my own, what, one customer or it could be different customers. And all of these are pulling telemetry back to, back to Intersight. Interesting. So, so the part of so this too. So as a customer, I could be utilizing the telemetry from someone else's site, not, not their information, but. Well, you know, the, the great part of that is Intersight can parse through all of these different types of things and really get actionable data from it. So when we talk about telemetry, this is really important because now we get to look at all of these sites. We get to figure out you know, what type of stuff is going on across our entire customer base and is that something that we want to action across. And the best part of this too is now we can start to integrate that into TAC conversations. So what happens if I've got a couple of sites out there and they say, look, you know, I, I'm starting to see some hot spots, I'm starting to see some, some trouble areas. We can integrate that data into our TAC calls too. So it's going to be really, really cool. I, I mean, I think that's always helpful. I know I've, as an engineer, spent a lot of time on the phone with TAC just trying to tell them what's going on. It's, it's kind of like going to the mechanic and already saying, here's the issue. <laughs> right, right. And, and so you know, not only are we going to have all that data, but it's going to be something that we can you know, build into that entire process for us to, to really get us a, you know, a time to resolution that is much, much quicker. And ultimately, when we're talking about critical infrastructure, which is what UCS was really built to, uh, to support, hugely, hugely important. Right. So, and you know, I think the last thing that I want to really mention here is, you know, the idea of automation. We like that. And this is really, really important from a number of different standpoints. You know, we've talked about integrating a whole bunch of stuff with, you know, some of the, the foundries of director and central and manager, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, we talked a lot about Hyperflex back at the last TechWise TV event. Right. And we built a lot of automation to Hyperflex. So the powerful part of this, you know, if you think about how we're going to look at this long term, you know, I may have a branch site out there. Let's say I want to stand up 50 of those or 100 of those. Let's say, for instance, we've got Hyperflex Edge site. So we're going to look at our edge site and what we can do, and we're going to show you this in a little bit in, in terms of the GUI, but you know, we can take each one of these devices and then claim them under the Intersight portal. So we're going to take all three of these, we're going to claim them. That's going to put them under the Intersight management portal and we're going to get all of the umbrellas that we've got for everything else that we've talked about. And we can even go so far as to say, look, you know, now I've got these in the portal we can go through and even blow down an installation remotely. So what this is gonna allow us to do is go through and use all of the processes we've already built intrinsic into Hyperflex and build my Hyperflex cluster remotely for an edge site. We could do this once, we could do it 50 times, we could do it a thousand times. Right. But it's built on all of this stuff. So ultimately what we've done here is build really, really cool management portal that's cloud-based but acts as a bridge to all of this. So it really gives us a huge, huge potential in terms of operational excellence with a lot of our customers 
no matter what their topology looks like. Yeah, I love that. You know, so you don't even have to bring up that installer VM anymore to spin it up. You can just do it direct from Intersight, and you could be across the country, across the world, and still have it all be automated and you know, in compliance without seeing that skew or that drift that we might see exactly right. doing it as, exactly our, right. as humans ourselves. Well, Chris, stay up here with me. Um, we're actually going to go to Rob somewhere in the audience. Yeah, we're back here in the back. I found someone back here toward the beer tent area. Uh, Alan Crouch with Vocera. You guys make those little communicator things that yeah, I see in we, the hospital? Yeah, we make the Vocera communicator and some uh, systems that monitor patient health. Now, you're here because you're a UCS customer. Correct. And you've also been playing with the tech preview, but before I ask your opinion of that in terms of what your experience has been and what you feel like it's doing for your operation, uh, just a quick feel, uh, what is your operation? You're head of IT infrastructure. You guys have multiple data centers around the world? Correct. So we have five data centers around the world. Uh, we have a small uh, Cisco uh, HX footprint in all of them. Um, so there's five clusters, about 25 nodes to start. We're just kind of getting our toe into the pond a little bit. So you've had a chance to play with the tech preview uh, and look at some of the visibility and some of the interaction that it's giving you. Any reaction so far? It looks good. It, it gives me a central pane of glass to look at my entire uh, environment from one place. So instead of having to go into each individual management pane at all of these sites to find you know, what's going on uh, within the UCS fabric, I can just go into inner site and boom, I have one pane of glass, one snapshot, I'm good to go. I won't commit you to anything, but you're looking to see how this can work for your environment going forward, it sounds like? Absolutely. You're going to keep playing with us? Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for attending today. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys. Back to Lauren over in the lab. All right. Thanks, Rob. It's always great to hear from people in the audience, people actually using the equipment. And, you know, of course, you're using the equipment too, Chris. Run us through that GUI because, you know, I'm loving the new GUIs that Cisco's coming out with. I can't stop talking about them. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. So I mean, it's really simple. We've taken the same type of operational management approach that we have with a lot of the stuff that we've been doing lately. So we're going to log in. This is your CCO ID. And this is going to present you with, first off, all of the new features. This is an agile development model. So we're going to continuously be updating what's actually available in the Intersight portal and Intersight framework. So, you know, for this particular portion, you know, we're just going to go through and look at the dashboard. Right on the onset here, you're going to see a lot of different types of information around my individual servers, my Hyperflex clusters, and UCS-managed fabric interconnect environments. So a lot of information right at your fingertips here. But from there, it's re really cool because you can actually drill down into each one of these. And it's not that hard to do. You click the upper left, you've got the, the options there. So you know, in, in this case, let's drill down into an individual server. It gives you a really easy tabular format. And you can search through that. So you know, if I want to look at the, the M5 models that I just shipped, you know, I can just search on M5, really easy way to tag them. And from there, I can sort it, too. So I just click on a couple of the, the icons here. I can see any, any health issues really, really quickly. So you know, it gives me a really easy way to, to really tabulate anything that I'm looking at. If I want to look at my Fabric Interconnect type of environments, I can go there. I can even show different columns as I need to. So if I don't see what I need, I can really easily fix that. But we've also built cross-functionality and cross-launch into this too. So if it's something where I want to go through and drill down into a traditional UCS manager environment, I've got the ability to do that too, right from, right from the, the Intersight GUI. So you know, this looks really familiar, right? You know, and it's something where for all of this stuff, I can now drill down into that specific information, and again, to make my operational model across everything that I've got a lot easier. So you know, this is really familiar to a lot of customers. We haven't really given you a lot of uplift here, but uh, there's a couple different things that we can look at even past that. So if I wanted to look at all of my Hyperflex clusters, this gives me a really easy way to look at all of those different things. And as we start to talk about edge, this becomes really, really, really valuable. But if I want to claim a new device, really simple process. What I'm going to do is just select a standalone server, and if when I start to to you know really deploy that asset, I'm going to go out, give myself admin rights for that before I set it up. I'm going to get a device ID and a claim code. So we're talking two-factor authentication here. Once we plug in that device ID, we're going to go back, grab the claim code. We're going to plug the claim code in here for a really simple GUI, and then give any tags I want. So for for instance, if I want to give it a site, you know, we showed this at uh, our global sales kickoff with GSX. So you know, we'll put the, the GSX tag on there, claim the device, and now it's managed under the Intersight umbrella. Really couldn't be easier. And once it does that, it gives me the green box to say I'm all set. And there you see it right at the bottom here. So really simple interface, right? And, and we're going to build a lot of framework around this. But you know, as we go back here, we can also look at this from a global perspective too. So all of my warnings for 
everything in my environment are going to come up really quickly. We can then do a global search for, say, the, the server that we just added in here, and that's going to pop up right there. We can go through and do some actionable items on that. But uh, again, I mean, we set this up to be really simple and easy to use across a completely new dynamic management model. And it, you know, the, the thing that I really want to emphasize here is the fact that you know, this is a brand new way of looking at a lot of different management structures. And you know, there, there really isn't an equal in the industry right now. If you think about all of the stuff that we can do, especially based off of all the different models that we built into this, all of the different products that we folded in, and you know, especially what the possibilities are as we go forward with, uh, with all the stuff that's available in Intersight today and over the next few months. I think that's awesome. You know, I, I love UCS Manager, but I think I wrote maybe a, a book's worth of blogs on it back in 2013 on how to navigate around all the different tabs and, and whatnot. So, I mean, it's fantastic to see that it's still there because there's a lot of functionality within UCS Manager, but to be able to just sort things really easily, get to like site-specific things or HX-specific things, yeah. I think that's fantastic. And again, I mean, you know, if you look at this, it's a global model. Yeah. And that's the key to this because if you look at all of the other different types of things we could do with management structures, none of them are going to pull in the telemetry like this. None of them are going to give you predictive analysis, especially as you look at a whole bunch of different operational models, no matter what you've got in the, in the environment. So it's, it's really cool. We're very, very excited. Well, thank you so much, Chris. You're very welcome. It's always a pleasure to have you up here. And I think we're going to move it on to Rob. Yeah, I'll take it back over. Chris, thank you so much, guys. Give me a hand. All right. I think you begin to see why we brought him back. He does some really good demonstrations and you begin to understand just what this stuff can do for you. Well, I'd promise that we're gonna bring uh, a little bit more detail around ACI Anywhere and our special guest for that is Mr. Tom Edsel. Please, Tom. Hey, Rob. How are you doing, sir? Thank you. I wanna start off by saying how much I love my job. <laughs> just because I get to hang out with people that are so smart and you guys are doing such interesting stuff. Um, but let me ask you, so where are uh, ACI fitting into this intent-based data center? How does that fit together? Yeah, intent-based data center. So, um, you know, what we've really been finding is that development of apps is incredibly important to our customers. They don't just take these apps off the shelf. What they do is they have to develop the apps themselves so that they can differentiate themselves in the marketplace. And so really apps are... Uh, the new business that we have to deal with in these multi-cloud environments. Our customer's customer is the app developer. And this is something that's really played into the hand of, of ACI, application-centric infrastructure. You know, where's that application it's thing that come from? not that new for you guys, yeah? Yeah, it's really not that new. Um, and so the intent-based uh, intent networking is really about deploying and running those applications. Mm -hmm. And we've been working on basically that idea for uh, about five years. We started in, in, in 2012, right. looking at ACI, and, and as you mentioned earlier about you know, uh, rebuilding from the ground up of uh, what it means to do networking in the data center. And ACI has really developed this, this whole uh, uh, abstraction of the network, right. which is closer to the way applications think about it and, and what the applications want, what the intent is of those developers when they're deploying those, those applications. And so uh, what we've been calling for a long time policy is <laughs> what we're going to be calling intent. You guys have some good momentum uh, around uh, really how ACI is going. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, we've got some great momentum. We have over 4,000 customers deploying ACI. We've really seen a big ramp in the last year, year and a half, maybe two years, where they've gone from kind of kicking the tires, what's this shiny new thing? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, networking people tend to be fairly conservative, and now they're into deployments and they're buying additional clusters and they're growing these clusters. It's, it's really a pretty exciting time. So we've talked about open APIs and stuff here. You guys mm -hmm. uh, continue to work with APIs. It's become very critical. Yeah, no, API, we started uh, with APIs from the beginning with ACI. Um, it, you know, it, historically in Cisco, there's been a lot of development of, of CLIs, and then we tried to bolt APIs on top of the CLIs. With ACI, we said, no, the APIs first, and then if we had to do a CLI or a UI, we'd be built on top of that API. So 
everything is available through that, that API. And it's really paid off for us. We have over 65 ecosystem partners. And how do we get that? It's, we can't handhold every single one of those. You have to have APIs that allow that, that product to be embraced, to be integrated. And, and that's really where the power comes from. So I've heard you talk about this notion of the intent life cycle and this thing of learn, mm -hmm. adapt, protect. Can you explain those phases, I guess, to me? And, and how, does it, how does it result in the actual technology that we're using? Sure, so it's kind of like the DevOps model. And, and really, the entire technology industry is moving in this direction where uh, there's a realization that it's, that it's, you, know, you don't develop something and then it's that way forever. It's, right. it's a continuously evolving thing. So our customers want to run their data centers in a very similar fashion. They wanted to be deploying these applications, deploying on the infrastructure, and then adapting to the changing landscape in that infrastructure and, and, and deploying again or making modifications. So we look at it this way. We say, look, you're going to learn what is the, your intent. What do you want to do in this data center? What are you trying to achieve? What's that business level intent? I want to deploy these applications. I want to have a certain level of availability. I want to have a redundancy at a certain level. Then we take that intent and we adapt it to the infrastructure. Because at the end of the day, there's still bits on the wire, there's still yeah. IP addresses, we still got to figure out how to, to, to configure an interface. So we take that intent, we adapt it to the infrastructure, and then we deploy it. And that mm -hmm. deployment is where we go into this, uh, what we call protect. It's a cycle. Yeah, and yeah so it's circular, it's yeah? Adapt, learn, adapt, protect, and then go back and learn because the application didn't stay the same, it moved. The uh, VM moved someplace, yeah. it, it grew, Slippery it shrank, it, uh, the link went up and down. It's a continuously changing. What you want to do in that data center is continuously changing. So we learn from the network, we learn from the administrator, we learn from the behavior of the application. Yeah. We adapt our infrastructure to the changing landscape. We, go, we implement right. that and protect the application. So here's what I want to do. Go I want again. to hear more about how that actually implements itself in ACI Anywhere. We'll mm -hmm. cover what's being done new but I believe Lauren has a, uh, a couple of people in the audience, and I'm not sure, Lauren, you're talking about how complicated applications are, uh, but who are you talking to now? Yeah, Rob, I'm here with Rita Younger from CDW, who I actually know better as, as the young girl on Twitter. We've been friends for a couple of years, I think. Yeah, we've tweeted back and forth. Mm -hmm. So Rita, tell me a little bit about what you do at CDW and what CDW is doing in, in general with ACI and the practice. I'm the national uh, practice lead for SDN at CDW. And at CDW, we've been implementing ACI. Our first install was in January of 2014. So we've been doing ACI installs for quite a long time. We no longer consider this bleeding edge technology. We consider it a foundational technology for all data centers. So you're saying it's ready for prime time at this point. <laughs> oh, that is my pet peeve. <laughs> it is absolutely ready for prime time. I would absolutely agree with you there. Um, so tell me a little bit about what verticals you're actually reaching. Um, you know, a lot of people are confused about where you can use ACI, who can use ACI. Tell me what you're seeing there. Ironically, just a few weeks ago, I went through our 200 plus ACI customers and I looked at who is implementing ACI. And the largest verticals that we see implementing ACI today are manufacturing and retail, healthcare, and financial. If you look at those verticals, they're typically risk adverse, but what they have in common is the need for security and compliance. So obviously this need for security overcomes them being risk adverse. So that is by far our biggest verticals. I think that's fantastic to note because ACI really was built from the ground up as a whitelist model as opposed to our traditional networks, right? We're, we're building in those contracts and the contract will let things through as opposed to just denying things here and there, right? Exactly. And if you look at security, security is just one of the use cases. I really look at ACI as kind of the foundation to getting into a fully orchestrated automated data center. So having that same agility that you would get by going straight to public cloud, you can do that with ACI as the foundation in your own data center at a lower cost and have control within your own data center. Would you say that there's a certain size company that should use ACI? Not at all. We have installs that are anywhere from two leaf, two spine, to over 100 racks with 1,600 applications in application-centric deployment. So there is no size too small. It's really based on the use case. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Rita. Thank and you. Uh, thanks for uh, working with ACI. <laughs> We're going to go back to Seth.
Come on out. Come on out. All right, and we're here with Seth Price now. Seth, tell us a little bit about who you work for, what you do, all of that good stuff. Yeah, my name is Seth Price. I'm the senior network engineer for Durham County Government in Durham, North Carolina. I hear you guys are winning awards with your innovation, et cetera. Expound upon that for me. Absolutely, shout out to Durham County. Um, we recently actually just won an award with the T Public, Techno Public Technology Institute, all geared around our up upgrade in the data center with ACI. That's fantastic. I love hearing stories like that. But, you know, rather than just toot our own horns, uh, tell me a little bit about what you actually like about ACI. Why do the features help, you know, the people in your county and what are you using it for? Yeah, that's important. As a, as a local government, the most important thing are, are our residents. Considering the data that we store, the security of that data is extremely important to us. We take our residents' data that we store very seriously. So one thing that ACI was able to do for us was improve the level of data security within our data center. That was key for us. Another thing, also with our residents in mind, was the ability to offer services and applications to them in a timely fashion that makes their lives easier. The application development architecture that we've been able to build with ACI improves those services that we can provide to our residents. Uh, disaster recovery is important to us. We're very excited about the Cisco multi-site and also the Cisco Anywhere, uh, being able to simply offer disaster recovery, not only in our own data centers, but also extend it out to the cloud while keeping a single point of orchestration. That's huge. But to me, the most important thing that kind of uh, you know, we're, we're a tech savvy company. A couple of years ago, Clearly. we won a tech savvy award yeah. with the, also the Public Technology Technical Institute. So we like to offer these services, but we're a government. We don't have a huge budget. We run a lean staff. So we want to be able to be this tech savvy organization, yet it needs to be simple for us to manage. That's the key factor for us when it comes to ACI, to be able to offer these advanced services, improved levels of data security, while reducing the complexity of those operations and managing them. I love that. I think a lot of this comes down to policy and automation. So Absolutely. thank you so much, Seth. Yeah, thank you, and Rob, I'm going to send it back to you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Press touch. Shout out to Durham there. I like that. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Love that. So I'm hearing micro segmentation and a lot of things that uh, you guys have done very well uh, really delivering uh, for customers here. What's new? ACI Anywhere, that's, that's really a, a really big initiative for us. Um, it actually encompasses a, a number of different uh, technologies. Frank alluded to it a little bit in his section where we're bringing ACI into the cloud. Now you say, well, ACI in the cloud, what, does that make sense? What we found with those 4,000 customers, they're telling us they love our APIs. They want to be able to use these APIs in all the environments where they're deploying applications. But the new data center is a multi-cloud data center. They don't just deploy on-prem. They deploy in the public cloud, and, and there's, you know, as That's you really know, the reality now, there's right? a whole bunch of yeah. different clouds out there. <laughs> and so, what we want to do is make it so that they can have consistent management paradigms for their network, for all of these constructs that we provide with ACI, but make them consistent in these other clouds. And so that's what we talk about when we're talking about ACI anywhere. But it also means bringing ACI to an environment where it may not be based on the Nexus 9K. And you'll hear more from us on that area in the future. So, so, so hold on to that wow, one for okay. the next TechWise. A big part of this is the multi-site uh, and the multi-site controller. Yeah. What we've done here is um, develop some technology that allows us to have a single pane of glass where you can create a, a single policy to manage across multiple sites, multiple ACI sites. Those sites might be in you know, San Francisco and Chicago, and we've added the idea of, of a deployment policy. So now you say, I want to deploy this this application profile, as Lauren was talking about, mm -hmm. I want to deploy this application profile in Chicago, or I want to deploy it in San Francisco, or I want to deploy it in both of those because I have oh, an wow. active, active data set. That really simplifies operations for mm -hmm. our customers because now you don't have to be going to one site and configuring and going to another site and configuring it and so forth. You can create it in one place, one single pane of glass, extremely uh, redundant, et cetera, across those, th that environment.
And lastly, uh, you know, we hear about containers, and I'm sure you've been talking about containers and Everybody containers here, containers everywhere. Well, containers are a, a part of the new reality in data centers moving sure. forward. And, you know, adoption is, you know, we hear some, you know, 25% of our customers are probably actually using containers, mm -hmm. um, but all of them are looking at it. Yeah. And what we've done is we've added the technology around Kubernetes and the integration. We've made now Kubernetes a first class citizen in the ACI network. And so as vCenter and it has been the first class citizen from the day one, now Kubernetes gives that same kind of visibility, same kind of status within the side of the ACI infrastructure where we can uh, create policies around attributes. We have uh, much more visibility, what's going on to the Kubernetes pods, et cetera. So again, you know, you're, you're deploying new stuff, you're deploying in a variety of environments. We're making yeah. it more simple, more extensible, more uh, more attractive to our customers. I like it, a whole lot more intuitive. Appreciate your hard work, I, you're humble, but I know you do a lot of great stuff. Thank you for taking the time to hey. join us. People, right, Tom Hensel, thank you very okay. much. <laughs> Guys, I think it's time to see a few more details with Lauren, yeah. and she has a guest. All right, I am here with Lillian Kwan. I'm so excited to be uh, working with you up here on TechWise. Thank You're gonna... you. I'm happy to be back here with you together <laughs> I'm glad. and demo ACI 3.0, particularly we're demoing multi-site, yes. right? ACI multi-site. And as Tom said, all the genius, the smart guys are sitting there. I'm just the person who's running the demo. You can see multi-site controller has a very clean front face. Like when you first log in, you basically land on its dashboard. And on the dashboard, it shows all the deployed sites. And in my demo, I have two sites. San Francisco and New York, which are two ACI fabrics in my lab. And it also shows the alarm or alert status for each site. And moving to the site tab, this here you can see all the tab, you can, uh, all the sites, you can add sites, you can delete sites, you can c change configuration for the infrastructure. Um, I'm taken aback by how modern and simple this is. It's very simple yeah. and clean, right? And then jump to the tenant tabs. This is where you define for the multi-site domain, you define your tenant space, which tenant space you want to stretch across sites. And also for each tenant space, you can choose which sites you want to deploy it or stretch it to. So for my multi-site tenant one here, I actually stretch it to both of my data center sites. But if I want to change my deployment, I want to remove it from San Francisco, I can easily uncheck here, I can save and apply the change and then this tenant space, tenant one, will be gone from San Francisco. And let's go to the schema tab. So this is a place where you define and you orchestrate your application network profiles. Right? So you have, schema is really for application deployment. Under each schema, you have ten templates. And under templates, you can create your application network profile. The first demo case I want to show is basically how easily multi-site controllers can let you deploy a one application globally right, to all your data center sites. So I already created this um, template one with app one, which is three tier app. And you can see through this simple GUI, you can uh, finish all the entire workflow to create one application netflow, uh, net, uh, application network profile. So you can define network construct like a VRF, and then you create a bridge domain and associate with one VRF, and you can configure IP gateway, IP subnets, and then you can create your EPGs and associate with a bridge domain. And you also create a filters and contracts, and under EPG, you can apply contracts right between two EPGs. I think that's really cool. But we're actually going to go to Rob uh, again out here in the in the audience with another another audience member. Yes, yes. Well, we've got some partners here that have been uh, working with ACI Core for quite some time, and uh, even experience. One of my favorite partners. I've always enjoyed working with you guys out of St. Louis Worldwide Technologies. John Duran, correct? Yes, sir. Gosh, got the name right. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you so much for your for your business and your your expertise. Um, just curious, how do you think we're tracking today? Are we? Is this in line with what you understand uh, your understanding of ACI and how it's working for you? So, the ACI 3.0 release really marks a pretty significant milestone in the maturity of the product. Um, I've seen customers really beginning to shift from an intent to understand it to much more of a desire to learn the product. Mm. And then the new GUI interface, the ease of use is really accelerating the adoption. We're seeing the customer adoptions really match up to that 
with accelerated deployments and, and moving out of the lab into actual deep production. Very, very cool. John, I'm just curious, are you seeing how the uh, ACI Anywhere is enabling you to, to, uh, to match up with those customer expectations, and um, you think that's going to work? You guys have been using this in your lab on, uh, already a little bit, yeah? We have. Uh, we've had it in the lab for a while, and as far as the customers go, the thing about ACI and really the customer environments, they're getting more complex in some ways, and the ACI products really helping that, you know, trying to find ways to simplify the complex. I think Todd mentioned that um, we see multiple cloud environments mm -hmm. growing from our customer environments. We see the hosted facilities as well as mergers and acquisitions continuing to happen. ACI multi-site, ACI anywhere is really bringing the ability to bring all that back together and simplify the interface as well as provide that consistency from security and policy standpoint. Well, thank you so much for your hard work. John Duran uh, with WWT, Worldwide Technologies. Thank you so much, give him a hand. And I've got him, have you come back over here. Have you stand up if you could please. Now I believe that I come to the right audience member. I talked to you earlier, so we I could have you come say nice things. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Give you're us, welcome. Give us your, your name and your Western Union, correct? Troy Lillehoff, network architect for Western Union. Perfect, that's who he is. Uh, so, <laughs> so tell me, you guys, you guys deal with a little bit of money exchange. You guys are bit. dealing with some complex stuff. You're using ACI to, uh, to, to kind of baseline some of these services, yes? That's correct, we're about two years into the deployment um, in our main data centers. Uh, Western Union, as you know, we're in about 200 countries, roughly 550,000 agent locations. So um, right now we're in uh, the two main data centers, but uh, you know, kind of as uh, Frank and Tom alluded to, what can we do for our customers, right? So. I mean, we're in the main data centers. How do we take those borders, move it out to the data centers, um, take the workloads, take the similar application, move all the policies throughout the network so that we can keep that continuation. When you're dealing with hundreds and hundreds of applications, making sure you're having consistent security models, uh, consistent network, consistent um, basically vis visibility across the board yeah. is just critical for um, the customer experience. Well, you guys are dealing with some, some high volume and also some very complicated things that people really depend on. So you really bring a new meeting to the kind of the criticality of data center. I want to thank you so much for your business. You're welcome. Appreciate what you guys are doing. Thank Thanks you. for using our stuff. I've got one more, Lauren. I promise I'm going to come back to you in a little minute. Yes, please, give him a hand. Let's see. Hey, hey, hey. How are you doing? Good, how are you? So you're, you're with SAP Ariba, correct? Correct, correct. What's your name? Let me make sure I get that My right. My name is Sudeep Kurajam. I'm a, a network architect with SAP Ariba. I hold the mic. Sorry. No, no, that's all right. Yeah, I know it was contaminated. That's the way I control already. things. That's how that works. <laughs> uh, so, so SAP Ariba, uh, yeah. you guys, you guys are providing some unique services and such, and you're also using uh, ACI in some unique ways. How well is this matching up with what you guys are uh, accomplishing? Great question. Uh, actually, we use ACI for container networking. Ah. That was about 18 <laughs> months ago, yeah. almost, right? And uh, what it allows us to do is allows us uh, a very rapid pace of business innovation, yep. uh, CICD basically. Okay. And uh, um, ACI um, also provides the several shades of gray between you know the web uh, app and DB that she was talking about. There's right. like that that uh, perimeter is melting, right? So uh, it allows us a, a lot of different policies. Uh, also, uh, it allows us to uh, bring up data centers at a very rapid pace. Okay. So something okay. that would take days traditionally could. Uh, spin up uh, with a matter of uh, minutes with APIs, yep. right? Um, so that's that's what it. So you guys need that flexibility. Thank you so much for Thank building you. your business on our technology. Appreciate your time, guys. Please give him a hand. Let's say Riva. Lauren, go back over to you. Thank you so Thank you. much, Lillian. Mm -hmm. Multi-site is awesome, right? Thank you. Wow. Lillian, thank you so much. So, Lorna, as we wrap things up, let me just ask you, uh, we learned a bunch of things here. I think, obviously, from it, yeah, guys, come on up. Uh, as, we, as, we, as we learned here, um, I think, obviously, ACI Anywhere, remember that? Remember Cisco Intersight, okay? Take a look at how these things can, can really help revolutionize, take you to that next level of what you're doing, okay? It's a multi-cloud world. Multi-cloud, ACI Anywhere, as you said, uh, intent-based networking, you know, we yeah, keep, we keep bringing that. out that buzzword, right? But it truly is, you know, we're really looking at policy approaches, automation approaches, intent approaches. So it's, it's about uh, the feedback loop that, that Tom Etzel was talking Absolutely. about as well. Absolutely, here, oh, we have, uh, we have oh. something here. 
Hold on. Look at that. You got that? that? Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you guys so much. Hey, guys, thank you so much for joining us. This has been so much fun. Such great innovation here. Uh, obviously, if you want to learn more, cisco.com slash go slash DC to get more information. Of course, keep watching TechWise TV. Appreciate all of you participating with us. Uh, continue to send in your questions, Twitter, stuff like that. Absolutely. That's always good. Uh, but, guys, I want you to help take us out, if you will. I don't. What's the formal way? What do we do? Okay, folks, grab your glasses. Everybody? Everybody ready? Oh, good. Which means lift up your glasses. Okay. What he said? Thank you very much. Thank you guys.